Hello everyone and welcome to this week's webinar covering the field of IT service management. I'm Nick Kondozi from PECB, the organizer of this webinar. Today's webinar will be presented by Mr. Yahya Ad Anwar, a PECB trainer from uh, Egypt. And during this webinar, he will talk about the factors affecting the success of SMS implementation. Uh, if you have any questions or comments throughout the presentation, please submit them by using the question box in the control panel, and we will come back to them and address them at the end of the session. Please, Yahya, you can start with the presentation. Okay, thank you. Good morning, everybody. Uh, it's a pleasure meeting you tomorrow today. Uh, today's uh, session is about um, the real life implementation issues. Uh, concerning the SMS, which is now a very important thing that people are trying to implement in their businesses uh, since um, about seven or ten years it started to emerge in the Middle East market. Uh, people seemed that they needed to improve their management performance. So they started to search for the best practices here in the Middle East and uh, they started firstly with the ITIL framework and ISO 20000. Uh, as far as I know, uh, about uh, 60 to 70 uh, big, organization, big organizations tried to implement SMS and they were faced with multiple problems. I started implementing SMS in 2007. So it's now about eight years. Uh, during these eight years, we have faced a lot of problems. Uh, the problems can be summarized as follows. Firstly, when you take uh, the standard or the framework and you study it, either by a training or by a course or by a book, uh, I, I see that you are in a plane, an airplane. And when you finish the course, you take your parachute and run and, and get out of this plane. When you try to implement it, you hit the ground. You find something completely different, not as easy as it is shared or, or as it is and, uh, being shared as a knowledge in the books or in the frameworks. So, as an example, if you try to implement ITIL, 26, 26 processes and the four functions, and even if you try to implement some of these important processes to you, you face a lot and a lot of problems and a lot and a lot of questions and a lot and a lot of things that you need to know. After eight years now, I can see that uh, during our projects, it is not enough that you adhere to only a single framework or a standard in order to implement SMS. Actually, it is like a very gold rare mine. You, you start mining, mining, mining a lot, and at the, at the end, you get a very small, uh, very small volume of gold. That is like when you try to learn ITIL, you try to learn ISO 20000, and then you think that you are able to implement it. Actually, it is not that easy. What happens is that you have to merge a lot of disciplines, a lot of frameworks, a lot of standards and methodologies, and techniques and skills all together in order to implement a very single thing that you would like to implement in ITIL or ISO 20000 or whatever, any standard that you are trying to implement in the service management system. Uh, our session today is uh, tackling this point, which is putting you on the ground, not on the airplane or not in the parachute. So uh, what we are discussing today is all the things that you need to know, even though you can add also uh, based on the context of the project that you are implementing SMS. Um, today is just a, a way to uh, make it much more clearer for us so that we can know what are the disciplines and the things that we need to know in order to implement it. As I've said, uh, in your country or in your situation, or your project or even a program, if you are implementing SMS, you will face a lot of things that will add to your 
uh, experience and you can also add to this and uh, to this presentation what you have faced during the implementation uh, phases well as you can see this is the first slide now uh, this is our agenda today. Uh, we will answer the questions of the following. Uh, the first one is, why do we need service management system? Why do we need it? Can we uh, say that we do not need SMS in our business? Of course, I'm talking about IT-related organizations. Or IT-related organization underpinning a certain uh, business that is not an IT, of course. The second question is, what are the guides for service management systems? What are the things that we need to know in order to implement an SMS in our business? Okay, and the third question is uh, talking about COVID-5 and its importance in the implementation of the SMS. Even though COVID is the governance framework, it does help very much in implementing service management systems. We will see how does COVID help us. And then we will answer the question of what do the four elements of the project contribute in order to make it successful? The people, the process, technology, and the culture. And then at the last, we will sum up all the ideas that we have talked about during the webinar, and then we will say, put them together in order to understand what we need to know in order to implement a successful SMS project. And then we will see how can PSB help us with the knowledge or the courses that they can provide us with. Well, businesses now are facing a lot of things in order to make their profit much greater, the risk much more optimized, the resources much more optimized. And it was not as, it is now not like the 80s when changing the systems from manual systems to computer based systems, and it was a wow at that time. Now business is not just looking for an, an electronic application. It is not looking for this now. Now the businesses are trying to improve the quality because a lot of competition is happening now in the world. And at the same time, then the very famous thing, they are trying to cut the costs. Well, even though business is running for about 100 years, like organizations of markets and the, the, the retails and things like this, even though they are very well aware of their businesses, now the technology now makes a very important part in their business. They are trying to utilize the technology in every aspect of their traditional businesses. They are now trying to improve the quality and, imp and also reduce the cost, and they are wishing that they do this by the best thing they, they, is known in the world. The best, thing, the best thing to do this is the service management systems, as they are trying to optimize the efficiency and the effectiveness of the IT services and also the service management system as a whole. This is one of the things that, the, that, 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 are dry, that is driving the business to implement an SMS. Also, uh, optimizing the resources makes, our, makes also a cost a cost cut because if you re optimize the resources that you are using and trying to make the liens as, as minimum as possible, this will improve the business perspective of the value that it is gaining from running their businesses, as well as the risk. The risk also face, it makes a very ob big obstacle for the businesses. They are trying to optimize both and the best thing 
to do this is to implement the best practices in any aspect of the SMS in order to optimize both of these things. Also, uh, now businesses are trying to outsource their IT services. Or, on the other side, IT organizations are trying to outsource their services to the businesses. In each case of this, in both cases, if the business is trying to outsource the IT services, they would like to manage it with the minimum resources in their, on their side. If they are trying to manage the, their IT services, how could they do this? If they are not well aware of the systems, if they are not well aware of the practices, they will face a lot of problems. Outsourcing will not be an overhead that is being removed from the businesses. On the contrary, if they do not have an SMS, they will face a lot of problems. And even though the outsourcing is a very good thing for the business as a profit, it will change by time to a very bad profit because if they don't have a, a system, the system is concerned with the service management, then they will not gain what, the, what value they were aiming to have or they were aiming to gain from outsourcing the IT services. On the other side, if you are an IT organization and you are trying to outsource your services to your customers, what are the privileges that you will try to use to marketize your IT services? What distinguishes you from other competitive IT services providers, of course, service providers? The question is, if I'm trying to give a very good outsourced services from my side to my customers, what are the disciplines? What are the things that I need to implement in my IT organization in order to gain the profit or even gain a, a larger market share? This is the question. The answer is simply you have to implement a service management system. A service management system will help you firstly identify your, your customers' goals, of course, business goals, and then align your services and processes to be effective and efficient and your objectives to make the underpinned business objectives happen. So in either cases, if you are a company requiring an outsourced service or you are a service provider trying to outsource your own services to your customers, both of you will need to implement a service management system. <clears throat> Another thing that business is is expecting to get from his ad from their IT services is that if I used any service a manual service or a traditional service and I am trying to re to replace it by an IT service. What competitive advantage will the IT services give me? What are these competitive advantages? If I want to make my services efficient and effective in order to align to my business goals, I also have to implement an SMS. Actually, service management system in many frameworks is aiming to improve the performance of your services, your IT services, as well as also making your system not, not, you know, not prone to legislations or allegations due to security breaches or data being unconfidentially exposed to people who are not who are not uh, who are not authorized to access this information service management system will give you both levels of security the first one is the one that is giving laws and policies and procedures and the second level is the one implementing it if you have uh, an idea about ITIL, for example, you have security management. Security management will set the policies, set the way, set the procedures, 
all the laws and all the policies that will govern your security environment. Access management will make you will make you able to implement security on the ground and have the, these policies and procedures applied actually. So you will have also to implement the service management system in order to avoid any allegation, any legal problems that might face you or face your business as well. These are at least the minimum things that are driving people or driving organizations to implement service management systems. So, okay, SMS seems to be good. What do we, what do we need to do in order to implement an SMS? Where are the resources that I will go and see to ch and check it to see what are the SMS guidelines and how to make this SMS system understood by my organization and my staff in order to implement it later on. If you are trying to implement SMS, it is not as easy as it seems, as I have said in the beginning of the webinar, actually the guides for SMS are so many guides that will help you to implement SMS. Each of these guides is looking for the SMS from a different aspect than the other. We have many sources that contribute, that will give you a full, a full picture of the service management system. As I've seen from the implementation, it is not only one source that will help you go through an SMS project successfully and easily, as it seems in the courses or in the books uh, they are, that they are trying to make it as clear as possible to you that it is easy to implement. Actually, I have to merge a lot and a lot of sources in order to implement it. We have frameworks. We have frameworks in service management, we have frameworks in governance, we have frameworks for the uh, business analysis, we have also frameworks for the project management. These frameworks and standards and methodologies should be combined together in order to make the SMS project or the program, if you are going into an SMS program, as successful as possible. Actually, uh, these are not only for the SMS, we have also things that need to be done on the ground because we are not dealing with, with systems only, we are dealing with people, we are dealing with culture. We have projects here in the Middle East, some of them are legally imposed on some organizations. These organizations have got a lot of budget that needs to be, you know, expanded on the IT era or the IT section in order to make sure that they are aligned to the whole business organization. But sometimes, sometimes when you try to implement the system, you face problems with people, you, you have problems with culture, so you need also to have some skills and some things that will help you tackle these points in order to make a, a holistic approach to make your service management system project or program as successful as possible. So we need different areas of experience. We need to know how to deal with people, how to deal with culture, how to deal with change. We are not only making an IT change, we are making a business change, which includes change in the culture, change in the people behavior, and these are the most important and most difficult things in your SMS project. Okay, so we will not deal with SMS frameworks and standards only. We have other things that will be discussed here in our webinar. We will summarize some of these frameworks, standards, 
and methodologies in our webinar now. The first thing that you need to know about standards and frameworks to help you implement SMS uh, in, your, in your business is the IT service management. This is the main concern of the IT service management. The main concern of IT service management frameworks and standards is to implement an SMS in your business. The most famous two standards or frameworks in SMS or service management is the ITIL framework. I think that everyone attending this session now has heard or even be or even certified in ITIL. ITIL is a framework that is um, a very global thing that is highly adopted in the businesses all over the world. In the Middle East, it is the most famous and the most uh, needed framework in IT uh, organizations. Um, what makes ITIL the best thing or the best practice uh, for it being implemented is that it is highly, highly achievable and as well highly recommended by IT service management it's uh, consultants and uh, books and every aspect of knowledge that is talking about service management system. As we know that ITIL is a framework that has emerged in the UK and uh, Netherlands and it first started as a function based then it was a process based then it changed it to a life cycle based and since that it has been the, the, the most widely acceptable uh, framework in the IT service management. What actually makes ITLF the best one is that it gathers the best practices in the field of IT service management. So you will need not to reinvent the wheel. All you have to do is to study and know what ITL provides as a best practice. You know that it now adopts the life cycle approach. The life cycle approach is very reasonable and suitable for the implementation of service management. And this life cycle is divided into five stages. The five stages are very important thing that makes business accept the idea of the framework of ITL. The first thing ITL still talks about is that you have to make a strategy you have to define your strategy. So you will have to answer why questions before, before answering how questions. And this is very important. This is very important that you set a clear and that will align the IT service strategy to your business strategy. This is, this is nearly the most important thing in ITL is that you align your goals as an IT organization to the business that you are supporting. And this what creates value for from using ITIL. These five stages are divided into a strategy stage for your services, of course, and then a design stage that will design your services or and processes based on your strategy. And then you will try to make a transition from this design into a live operational services and processes and not only this you will have to improve your services or processes or even your people continually in order to align or realign to the business objectives actually the five stages are comprised of 26 processes 26 processes form the whole framework of ITIL these processes are divided into uh, the strategy stage and the design stage, the transition stage, the operation stage, and finally the continuous service improvement stage. These processes actually takes a holistic and a complete set of processes needed in order to implement a successful service management system. And 
as well. It does also recommend implementing four functions in the operation stage, which is the most uh, acceptable stage for the IT technicians and professionals. This is very, this is our day-to-day -day, uh, behavior or our day-to-day -day, uh, actions that we do. So in the operation stage, we are uh, recommend the, the IT recommends that we implement four functions. These functions are the service desk, which acts as an interface between the business and the IT service provider and also two functions defining the standards and designing the best uh, framework for implementing your services and running them correctly which are the technical management and the application management and finally the IT operations the IT operations function is responsible for running and making the status quo as uh, as uh, stable as possible. The IT operation is divided into two functions, the control function, which is responsible for the uh, server management, the console management, the backup and the restore, and things like this, and the facilities that is concerned with the data centers, data center consolidation, supplier management as the entrance and the security behaviors. Uh, these are the two functions that comprise, comprise the uh, IT operations. So we have four functions, the service desk, technical management, application management, and the, uh, and the IT operations. Uh, what is actually making ITIL um, very acceptable to the business and the IT, both accepted, is that it always, seek, it always seeks the value creation, how uh, ITL is very much concerned with setting your goals and your directions of your IT organization aligned to the business objectives. Uh, sometimes the IT might be very technically centered, which does make problem in value creation. And sometimes it is trying to be responsive to the business objectives. And also this makes a problem. What actually makes ITIL very acceptable is that uh, ITIL framework recommends that you make a good balance between responsiveness and the uh, technically centered uh, mindset. Actually this happens by aligning your objectives to the business objectives which are really changing over time so your IT objectives should be as well changing in order to align and realign to these objectives. Not only does ITIL create value through the alignment of the of IT objectives to the business objectives, but also it depends on a subject uh, on an objective way of managing your service performance. How by making uh, the your critical success factors and key performance indicators and your metrics aligned to your vision, which is also aligned to the business vision. So you will have to continually improve your services through an objective measurement. This objective measurement makes the judgment on the measurement and measurement of performance much more better than any other way of improving your services. The second part of the service management is not just a framework. As we know that there is a difference between standards and frameworks. ITIL is a best practice framework, which means that you are not obliged to follow every and, and each single thing in ITIL. You will use what you need and adopt it and then adapt it to your environment and the context of the project that you are implementing as a messenger. This is the most important thing that makes or characterizes the uh, framework. But actually, there is another thing 
that is now being needed by most outsourcing companies and also businesses requiring outsourced services from IT organizations. I need to know, if I am a business of course, I need to know if you are really a good IT organization or not. How do I know this? Now, you cannot tell me that I'm implementing ITL and just like this. I need an evidence. So one way of gaining an evidence is gaining a certificate from uh, an organization, a respectable one, that will give you an, um, a fair certificate stating that you have an SMS system implemented in your organization. The only standard that will will give you a certification in the service management is the ISO IEC 20000 standard. This is the first international standard for IT service management. And as you know, it was developed in 2005 by the ISO IEC organization and it superseded the earlier 15000 developed by the British Standards Institute group. It was based on, it was based on ITIL and still is. Uh, this uh, ISO IEC will give you a 16 processes out of 26 from the ITIL. This is a requirement based standard which means that in order that your organization gains an ISO IEC 20,000 certification, it needs to, to to make a, to fulfill certain requirements in order to make us to make sure that your organization, your service provider organization, is able to plan, to establish, to implement, and to operate and monitor, review and maintain and improve a service management system. Of course, this certificate is about requirements. It doesn't guarantee 100% that your service that as a service provider you are the best or that you are a successful one but at least it defines uh, or it, it reflects that you have uh, a system implemented in your organization and this might be uh, the least evidence that if I am a business and I am taking an outsources from you I'm trying to take so uh, an outsources uh, for services from a service provider, this will be a, a, a guarantee for me that at least you have a service management system in your organization. Why? Because it demonstrates the capability of the service provider, that the, that the service provider is able to design, to transition, to deliver and improve their services. Uh, 20,000 comes in different volumes, 20,001, 20,002, 3, 4, etc. Uh, these parts will help you implement the standard and gives you some examples and sometimes what are the requirements and how to do this standard in your organization. This is a very important source for people seeking to implement an SMS uh, system in their organization. Uh, ISO 20000 will give a certification for both people and organizations. If you are a 20000, uh, if you are a consultant or an implementer or you want to understand how 20000 uh, should be applied, you can take certification like foundation, implementer and consultant and things like this. And if you are an organization, you will get an ISO IEC 20000 certification that guarantees or that certifies that your organization is in it does have an SMS service in place. As we have said in the beginning that organizations seeking the implementation of SMS is trying to improve their performance, their efficiency and their effectiveness. So one of the things that really now emerges as a very important aspect is that we 
as an organization, an IT organization, or a business running an IT service are well aware of the information security management. Information security management is not just like this. It is a very important aspect of the businesses and also the service provision. Uh, information security management uh, is a very, uh, you know, is a very complex part as it is uh, highly diverse and it's, uh, it, it does tackle a lot of domains. But if you want to get a good aspect or a good uh, view of the information security management, you can go and check the ISO IEC 27000 uh, standard. This standard is specialized for the security management. Okay, it is also uh, 20007 and one, two, and three, these are the, the family of the security management. Uh, it is it's, it's concerned with the information security, of course, management. Um, even though ITIL and uh, 20,000 have uh, tackled the security management, uh, it is not as deep as it is being discussed in the ISO 27,000. This is also a thing that you need to know in order to make uh, a good SMS implementation. So now that we have known that in order to implement an SMS, we need to know the IT service management standards and frameworks. We need to know the ITIL. We need to know the ISO 20000, and we need to know the ISO 20000, 27000 for the security. Is it enough for me now to start implementing the SMS project? Actually, this is only the knowledge. This is only the knowledge that you need to know in order to make as a goal or a direction that you will go in to, towards in order to implement the SMS. But also you need some things accompanying your knowledge and skills and methodologies that will help you implement this. Of course, you will never go through such projects without having a project management discipline. So, project management is concerned with the change. In order to make a successful change, project management has emerged in order to manage this state of change as a project. It has about five characteristics that you need to know. In any project that you are implementing an SMS, you have to make sure that it is a period of change and it is also a temporary period and it, it implies uniqueness. Uniqueness means that implementing SMS in organization A doesn't map 100% or even some percent as you implement SMS in an organization B. There are differences. Even if these organizations, these two organizations are seeking the same processes, the same deliverables of the project, it differs. Why it differs? Because each organization has certain context that is running in in order to implement their SMS. And also, you have to make sure that you have to know that implementing the SMS will, in, will incur that many functions will have to work together in order to make this project successful or this change successful. And also, you have to manage during the project the uncertainty that will face you, which means that you have to manage the risk accompanied during the SMS project. The best way, the best way to manage this change is using a project management methodology. The good thing is that project management methodology is a, a very common and understood, understood uh, management uh, behavior that many IT uh, practitioners need to know or even gain certification in such a field. 
project management um, uh, frameworks and standards and methodologies differs from countries to countries. Uh, you know that in uh, in UK and uh, Netherlands and the Commonwealth count countries, you have the methodology named PRINCE2, which is Projects in Controlled Environment 2. This is the most common project management methodology used in these countries. Uh, in the US, the PM book is the source for project management. This also fits well. In Europe, IPMA. In Japan, PMAJ, Project Management Association of Japan. And if you want to know an international standard that is govern that is making a standard for country uh, companies that runs project management, you can check the ISO IEC 21500. This is a project management standard. Any of these standards will help you much in implementing in, in implementing your SMS project. You can you cannot proceed in any project using the traditional ways of the 1920s or even before this, you have to learn or you have to check what are these methodologies and the best practices and the standards concerning the project management. This is also another thing that you need to know in order to make your project successful. Implementing SMS is not a fun. It is not done for fun. It is done for a, a benefit realization. Businesses trying to implement SMS are seeking benefits. These benefits need to be justified, clarified, documented, and, and continuously uh, being monitored in order to make sure that the project will deliver the benefits or the outcomes required from the project. One of the most important aspects that people implementing SMS is that they should formalize and articulate the benefits that are being gained from implementing an SMS project. One of the, one of the things that as an SMS implementer needs to know is the financial management. Why? Because projects should be founded on a very firm business justification. Uh, before you have to attempt a project, you should confirm that this project will deliver a value, will deliver a benefit to the business. And this benefit should be well documented. In order to know how to document these benefits, you should be aware of how to write a good and a brilliant business case in order to gain acceptance on your project. If you are an internal service provider, or if you are a shared service unit, or even an external service provider, you have to convince the business to get commitment for it, for the SMS project. The, the thing, or the only thing that the business looks at is the business justification, or the benefits that is realized, that will be realized from the project. So you have to get a very good good grasp of writing the business case. You have to learn also the investment appraisal techniques which will help you write a good and a convincing business case to your business. So you need to know some skills like uh, how to calculate the return on investment, for instance, the value on investment, the net present value, how to appraise, how to appraise your, your 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 costs by knowing the value of, of money over time, and also uh, the internal rate of returns. These are some financial concepts that needs to be known that need to be known by the implementer of an SMS or the project manager or the program manager that will be overseeing the implementation of an SMS project. Now let's talk about something 
that is very important. If I'm seeking to buy uh, a vehicle that will make me move from a place to the other, uh, it's about one kilometer. And this road is very good and very well uh, paved. And I need not to have a very expensive vehicle. If you are a consultant for me, and I'm asking you what type of vehicle that I need to buy, and I'm, trust, I'm having trust in your opinion, you should never recommend a very highly and costly vehicle for such a small trip or a small distance. On the contrary, if the distance is a very long one and the roads are not well paved, it is not advisable that you recommend a, small car, a smaller car or a smaller vehicle for this, uh, for this road. What I mean, what I need to, to clarify here is that your opinion and which uh, processes that needs to be implemented in any organization uh, should be thoroughly checked before you recommend them to the business. How? You should be able to understand the requirements and the needs in my business in order to recommend the best the best solution for my situation right now. And by when days changes and when the circumstances changes, you need to recommend another set of processes or functions or whatever that is really needed by my business. To know that you have to get a very good understanding of, a, of an important discipline right now which is called business analysis. Business analysis is concerned about analyzing the business needs and determining the best solution to the business problems. Sometimes when you go to a business and you try to recommend something, you can go and recommend some kind of processes and you are and you write a business case stating that the benefits realized should be one, two, and three. And then after a long period of implementation, which might last for uh, 15, 18 months, and then waiting for the benefits to be realized, maybe it be uh, 36 months, and then the business is waiting for the benefits and nothing happened. This is a very bad attitude or very bad thing to do in the SMS projects. Actually, businesses will lose their confidence in IT and the perception will, will degradate towards IT service providers. So, so, in order to avoid this problem and in order to, get, to give your business a real value, you need to have a business analysis uh, mindset, which means that you have to check and identify the business needs and then uh, write them down and then how and model them and use a various techniques in order to understand the actual needs of the business. In order to understand these skills, you should know about or read about business analysis. This is one of the most important disciplines and a very practical one that will help you choose the right set of services, the right set of, sorry, the right set of processes, the right set of uh, functions that need to be implemented in your SMS project. One of the things taught in business analysis is that IT changes normally fail. Why? Because they are not related or they are not linked to business change, which means that you also need to have a business change management skills that you need that you that needs to be implemented as well as IT changes are being implemented at the same time. If you make an IT change and the business does not change in order to uh, reflect these changes of the uh, on the IT, most probably, most probably, this projects will fail, will fail to acquire or to gain the goals set uh, ahead of the project. Um, 
this is one of the most important things the people and the business change sometimes you need to reorganize the business you need to reorganize the function sometimes you face problems of people being laid off or, or, or even sometimes you might need to hire new employees which might also face some problem for the businesses but in any case you have to make both changes both into changes synchronized the IT change and the service management change as well being uh, parallel to a business change sometimes when you change the environment to a state that is mentioned as the best practice. The new state will not make a best situation or a better situation for the business that is implementing the SMS and their IT organization. And sometimes this is related to their domain. For instance, if you are implementing the SMS in a banking environment, this differs completely when you implement the SMS in an oil and gas environment, company I mean, business, and sometimes if you are implementing an SMS in a police or a military place, it completely differs. So what is the, what is the problem? The same SMS processes, the same knowledge is written or, or being discussed in volumes as a single thing doesn't differ what is the problem here the problem actually lies in the domain that you are implementing SMS in it knowing your domain understanding its constraints understanding their environment understanding their objectives understanding their needs makes you have a good clear a good and clear idea about the best situation to the best the best solution that you need to provide for this domain in order to make your SMS project a success so when you implement an SMS project you should understand the business domain whether it is a governmental commercial trade non for profit organization or whatever you need to know this in order to choose the best approach to implement your SMS. Sometimes you need to get deeper. It is not just a normal or a high level knowledge of your business domain. Sometimes, and in some projects really, you need to have a, a subject matter expertise in these projects. If you are not a subject matter expertise and you are just a generic consultant, you need to get help from people who are, who are subject matter experts in these fields. Sometimes when we do projects of implementation in the Gulf area, in the Middle East, we need to get someone from the market that understands how to propose and how to write the proposal and how to and how to implement this, this how to know what what people need to what, what people need to make in order to make your SMS project success. Sometimes we use subject matter expertise in companies like oil and gas because they know what are the specific areas that need to be um, we, we need to concentrate on it in order to make our project a successful one. Now, um, I think this one is the um, one of the major things that we were shocked when we when we try to implement our SMS project. Um, one of the cases that we have met in our projects is that we stayed for about two years implementing a complete set of systems starting from the business process management 
and the underpinning IT process management, and a balance scorecard, and um, uh, project uh, and strategy management project that lasted for for uh, that last for 24 months, I think, I believe. Uh, after implementing the project, it was a very big project, and um, the the customer paid a lot for this project. It was a very good bulk. Of money, and it was supposed that we revisit the organization after maybe six or seven months in order to uh, upgrade our software solution that we have provided them with. This solution makes a strategy uh, is, is concerned about strategy management, process uh, business process management, and IT service management. And SMS was part of this project, of course. And after 24 months of work and effort and implementation and whatever that you can say, we we ask it for the 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 server. Where is the the server? People said that when we run the, the this when we run the server, we run it for about two months and then one of the managers came and removed this as he said that it is it is now a problem for us. It is not giving us what we need. So and. And we asked them what happened. How could they take this decision? He said that the, the management has changed, and the people also were having um, problems when their performance was measured, and so they tried to to help themselves by removing the the server from the infrastructure. This was a very shocking fact. Of course, we got our money. It's not the part of money. It's a part of the the effort that we have done. The, the improvement. So, what is the problem here? What we have learned from this project is that even though if you are trying to introduce a good change for the people, and the people are not ready to accept this change, even if you have commitment from the top management, and even if you get uh, an unfaithful <laughs> Commit uh, buy-in from the team members or from the the employees. This change, if they are not ready, if they are not ready to accept it, your project will probably or most probably fail. So it is nearly necessary to have some soft skills in the implementation team, the team that is implementing the SMS, in order to make the implementation project a success. Soft skills are a very important aspect of the implementer and the project management implementation of the and the service management implementation team. So can we summarize some soft skills that need to be found in our uh, experts or the consultants implementing the SMS. Okay. One of the soft skills that are necessary in your project is the communication skills. Communication skills are very important in our SMS projects. It might help you hasten or even uh, follow the, the project plan accurately or it can make a great delay in a project we had a, we had a project in some country near us and we had a problem with communication we we, we had we, we, we have uh, we have to to make the time of implementation four times the normal time because of a communication problem and this was a very bad experience why? Because we have a we had a problem with the communication skills. And sometimes you will get a conflicting requirements from the business. You will have to fix this situation by having some negotiation skills, as well as introducing change to people who resist us. Or, and this is a normal thing that you have a change resistance. So you will have to have a or to gain some change management skills. And in some cases, disputes do arise. In such case, 
you need to have some dispute management skills. And in order to uh, make how things soft and in order to make your team and uh, your employees and your customers uh, follow the, the guides that we need to implement in our project, you need to have some leadership skills in order to convince and to make them follow what the project needs to do. And the most important thing, the most important thing, if you believe in your concept and your design and your ideas, genuinely, you can convince others. If you do not, if you don't have a self-belief, you will never, you will never convince others to follow what you are recommending them to do. These are some of the soft skills that need to be found in your, in, in your implementer in order to make the, the project successful. Okay. Implementation. Implementation of the service management system comes in three stages. The first phase of the project is an assessment phase. You assess the current situation, the as-is situation, and define the to-be situation, and this will be the first part of the project. The second part is that you develop your processes, you develop the function, and then deliver them and implement them in the environment of your customer. But actually, processes and functions need to be implemented on a system. So you need to have a technology knowledge in order to implement these systems. But the technology comes in various prices, various uh, aspects, and also various uh, characteristics and properties and specifications. So, um, in each project, you need to know what technology is the best thing that needs to be that should be implemented in these environments for projects that they they have um, a, a tight budget. You cannot deliver to them a, a technology application or technology solution that is high high cost. So you and in some organization that needs perfection and they have good budget for this thing, you need to recommend the best software or the best technology to be implemented in their environment. So. Uh, there are many technology uh, solutions that need to be done in order to implement your SMS correctly. And you have uh, some guidelines now to help you decide which are the best, which of them is the best solution for your business. You have to make sure what the price is, the quality of your te technology, the features of each of the technology uh, um, you know, variations and varieties that you have, and alternatives, and also the ease and feasibility of implementation of these technologies in your project, of course, and also in the country that you are implementing the technology. Do you have the available support in such uh, country? Uh, the, the availability means uh, that you have people available, uh, the price is also reasonable, which makes them which make it available for them or not. The scalability of your technology, if the business is about to expand or is expected to expand, you have to make sure that the application is scalable and also the support of a specific requirements that you have uh, recommended in your process and function development phase. Um, even though it is not an SMS, it is a very important aspect that you have an enterprise IT governance. Governance is about three things. It's about benefits realization, resource optimization, risk optimization. This is governance. And I think that these three are a very reasonable and maybe the drivers for any SMS project. So even though it is, it is about governance, it will help you mostly implementing your SMS. If you need to know something about governance, the best thing that you need to know is about it is COVID-5. COVID-5 is a great thing and guide for SMS implementers in, uh, that will help them implement their uh, SMS projects 
uh, smoothly and, and, and even it will make it much easier for them to map the top stakeholder needs till, till it maps to the processes, uh, processes that makes the enablers of COVID-5. Um, one of the enablers, seven enablers in COVID-5. Actually, this is the greatest effort, I think, in, from my opinion, in COVID-5. Why? Because it has met the high-level view of business to a very process-related uh, element that most of the SMS implementers thoroughly know and are very familiar to. Sometimes you might know the process, but you cannot map it to which business needs. But in COVID-5, this effort has been done for you. You can check the COVID-5 and the COVID-5 implementation, the framework, the implementation guide, and the process enablers guide, and also the information guide, in order to help you map the business needs to which specific process and enabler process that you need to implement in order to, to get this need on the ground happening and also realized. Um, COVID-5 also helps you with a project plan that tells you and helps you making sound actions in your project. You can uh, learn from COVID which type and uh, which actions that you need to know in order to have the with the with the uh, organ uh, implementation. Okay, I see here that we have some questions. Okay, now. Uh, COVID-5 will help you in the assessment steps taken. Uh, in the assessor guide, the, 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 the COVID-5 will help you how to assess the organization, which is the first step in the SMS implementation. COVID-5 is really a great resource for you to help you implement SMS on the job. Okay, so it is not about SMS. It's about people. It's about process. It's about technology and culture. So, um, if you try to do the best process design and you don't have commitment from the people by involving them, performing them, then your project will most probably fail. Why? If you don't have the culture changes in order to fit the new situation, your project also will fail. And if you don't have the required technology to support your service management system, you will not be able to achieve what you are seeking from the SMS as effectiveness and efficiency of performing the processes and also the performance of the people and the functions in the SMS system. So what you need is that you have a holistic approach in, the, in your project. You need to design the process, of course, and also make the people understand what they need to do in order to be able to run the process and the activities of this process correctly. You have to make a culture change or help in the culture change in order that the businesses implementing SMS adopts the ideas and the culture of the service management as a system. And also, you have to choose the correct technology in order to have a successful and a well-aligned technology to the business uh, objectives that are uh, should be uh, accomplished from the SMS project implementation. Okay, so putting them all together, in order to succeed in the implementation of SMS project, you will have to merge several disciplines. Some of them are discussed here. You might add your some more as your experience in your implementation might find, but these are the, the, the standards and the methodologies and the frameworks that we thought that, uh, that helped us in implementi implementing our SMS projects. Uh, knowing this discipline is just a first step. Uh, you need to merge them and make them uh, blend in a good way in order to get a successful project that is implementing an SMS. You need also to understand your constraints and conditions in implementing each of which each of these disciplines and uh, frameworks. PCB can help you in these aspects. They do deliver courses and materials and courseware and uh, that will give you a good knowledge of some of these aspects 
and I think that if you refer to their website, you can get uh, a good uh, idea of which of, uh, of the disciplines and frameworks and standards that we have discussed now, so that you can gain more knowledge and then go to the next step, which is merging and blending them to get an SMS. Um, thank you for your time. And uh, uh, if there is any question, yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, thanks. I will be glad to. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Much. Thank you very much for the great presentation, and also thanks to all attendees for uh, attending the webinar. We hope you enjoyed the webinar. Uh, because the time is limited and we exceeded uh, the planned time for this webinar, we don't have uh, much time to answer to the questions. But we, all, we received all the questions and uh, we will come back to them by email. So okay. thanks again uh, for attending the webinar and please don't forget to check our website and our social media channels for more information about our upcoming webinars. Thanks again and Thank have you. a nice day.